Hey guys, a while back I got a comment from a user named Nana who asked me to show you how I plan my goals in my bullet journal. Um, I'm not sure really if that's what today's video is, but uh, it at least inspired today's video, which is going to be uh, project planning and tracking in both my paper planner and digitally. So I'm going to show you just in no particular order a few different project pages and project tracking pages that I have used so you can see how I do it and how I stay motivated. So I'm not showing these in any particular order. I'm just going to start with um, some paper ones before I move on to digital things. So uh, this is the traveler's notebook that I was in before I moved into rings. Uh, if you recall, this is a um, Shakespeare o Pemberley angel in pocket size. And I've just got field notes in here. So the first project here is a really simple one. Um, this is kind of what it looks like when I just have to get ideas down on pages and it's really just I, I took this spread and I filled it with just words you know. So this is um, a party I was planning a bridal shower for my sister so I you know brought out sort of a, a schedule of events on this side. Um, I was gonna use this for a game I was planning didn't end up using this uh, but um, this is like a list of things to remember to bring, uh, a list of tasks that needed to be done and then who was doing them and then I checked them off as they were done. This here was, um, a, like, these numbers represent each week, so 5 to 11, the 5th to the 11th, the 12th to the 18th, how many weeks it was until, um, the actual event, because here's the date and time. And so I crossed off each week as they went by so I could keep track of how much time we had still to plan. Um, and I was just, you know, using this to take notes as I was on the phone with the different people who were helping to plan the party. So that's sort of a what a project page can look like. Um, this isn't like project tracking. This is a project planning page. Um, this one, too, is a project planning page. This is for the journalism scholarship at WizU on myhogwarts.com. Um, so I was planning a sort of event that I was running, and so this here is sort of a little bit of a calendar. It doesn't have dates on it because what really matters is the week, because we go by like a, a year is like a 10 week cycle. And so in week eight, exam week, and then summer week one, two, three, um, I was just kind of tracking like, I put a letter here for each thing that needed to be done. So on date A, which is Monday of week eight, I announced the event. Um, and so I just basically wanted to make sure that I knew what day I had to do a task and what task I was going to do. And then these were the two components of the event. Uh, I'm running this project or this event again on the site uh, this year. It's about six months later. And uh, it, I basically am using the exact same format. I actually came back to this one to remember what dates I had done things on. Um, and I'm using it the exact same way. Um, I actually then once I wrote out exactly what needs to be done on each thing, I put a dot on each of these dates on my actual calendar so that when I'm going to my calendar doing my weekly planning, I know, oh, there's a thing that day and I'll flip back to this project page, look at the date and go, okay, that's the day that I need to do this particular task. So that's what that looks like. These are from the ring planner now. Um, and this is more of sort of a tracking thing. This goals and rewards insert is from Peanuts Planner Co. And I think it's really clever. I loved it when I saw it and knew that I wanted to try it right away. I printed it out with this on one side and then on the back just grid paper. Um, in this particular case, I didn't use it for anything, but uh, it, that's the idea is it's for like notes for the project. So this is a really cool insert where basically you put what your goal is and then you have 50 squares and you can fill those in. You say what each square represents. So in this case, I just made each square represent 2% so that 50 was, um, 50 squares was a, uh, hundred percent of the project. I'm going to show you this project in my digital project tracking. Basically I use the digital project tracking and then whenever I hit a milestone, I filled it in here. So you have the goal, of like the date you want to achieve or what the what the achievement is which like milestones along the way which in this case this is a very basic one 20 30 40 50 percent right the date you want to achieve it on and then the actual date that you achieve it on and then you can put a reward to earn once you hit that goal um, so in this case they were all snacks because I was pregnant and I liked snacks okay sue me 
I did actually get red vines at some point, even though they aren't checked off. But yeah, I finished this in time and you will see what that looks like in the digital planning. That was a lot of fun too. Um, this was also during maternity leave when I was getting all of the videos that I needed uh, that were gonna go up while I was away, while I was on maternity leave after the baby was born. Um, I wanted to get them all up in time. And so here we go, these go together. So I listed every single video I needed to make and each one has seven steps um, from, you know, prep, record, edit, um, anyway, all the different things. Some tasks are bigger than others, but, um, and then I filled in the same thing here with red ones were for the baby videos and the planner videos and the green ones are for the Sims videos. And I just filled in a box when I needed it. In this case, I only I had 40 videos to make. Is that right? No, 45 videos to make. So I um, just filled in the last row of boxes here with black, meaning that I don't have to worry about those and just filled in the rest. And then in this case, the goals were a little bit different, like um, sort of it's all the the Sims videos for this month or all of the, you know, everything filmed. They were a little bit more specific instead of just, you know, 20, 40, 60. Um, and is there anything on the back here? No. So these, it's filling in boxes is very satisfying. Um, oh, and these are for the Isbees, the Sims videos. So these are all the planner videos and baby videos and then the Sims videos. Only have five steps because they, I don't need to write the description, I think, and something else. Anyway, so as far as project pages and planning goes, these are some of the videos that I made for that whole system, that whole process. And so I think I've shown this before. I have these boxes at the top and I check those off as I accomplish the things. And these are really just for videos that I feel like I need some preparation for. And so I'll write things out, whether it's just, you know, a list or this one, I was taking different shots. And so I had some different things I needed to say, you know, with each clip, um, just sort of some free writing and notes. And then I pull this out and I use it as a reference as I'm kind of going off the cuff. I don't usually script that many things. Um, when I do, I would script something like you know, that I'm actually reading out. I would do that on the computer, but this is just sort of lists and um, notes and thoughts and jots and all that. And then finally, the last of these little goals and rewards things, this was after the baby came. Um, I decided at some point that I was going to feel a lot of anxiety about how much breast milk I was pumping. So I made up this little guy to track how much I was producing every day. So my goal was uh, 48 ounces. So I filled in these two boxes with black. Um, and then, yeah, my goals just, or the achievements, micro goals were just 12, 24, 36, 48. And so my plan was to get to those 48 ounces by, you know, before I went back to work. I, uh, yeah, before I went back to work. So that was this day here. I did reach the goal a couple weeks early. So that's great. Um, and then there's, you know, rewards. This is a day off pumping. Yay. Um, oh yeah, this, um, this one here where it says sleep. The reward there was I had pumped enough that I let my husband take all of the feedings for a night. And that was great. Um, so on the back of this, I, this is, may not make any sense to anybody, but these are the ways that like my brain works and I sort of, I, I think about the way I want data to be represented and then I make a spread for it and it may not work for anybody else. But the idea here was that I wanted to keep four ounces in the fridge at all times. I think that's right. Um, and so I had to make sure that I was replacing those four ounces every day. And then I also wanted to pump an additional two ounces to put in the freezer. So that was the idea. If I pump four ounces for the fridge, two for the freezer. Then this day, I guess I took all the night feedings or whatever. There were already four ounces. So I filled that in with black and then I actually did six. So I did my freezer quota and then additional four ounces here. Um, there was a reason why this was on different sides. I guess I only pumped one ounce there. That was probably from the Hakka. That's a great product. I might talk about that someday. So that was the idea. Um, there was a reason why I did it to the side here. Maybe I had, 
I don't remember. It made sense at the time, and I definitely found that filling out this little tracker every morning as I did my pumping, because I was just pumping once in the morning. Before I went back to work, I just pumped one time in the morning, and I was able to get all of this, so it was good. Um, I found this very motivating. Being able to fill in boxes, I find very motivating. Um, the other thing that I really find motivating are my digital project trackers, so I'm going to show you those now. So, backstory here. The very first year I did NaNoWriMo, uh, I was writing, like, you know, on a computer, but I had a notebook that was a grid notebook, and so I made a whole graph in this, you know, A4 size grid notebook of, like, how many um, words I had written every day, and this one, too, where I had, like, how many words, uh, yeah, how many each day, and then how much overall. And it was great. It was, you know, helping me stay motivated every night at midnight. I would uh, fill in the columns with what I had done that day. And I found it very motivating. So I don't know if it was the next year or the year after that. I started um, keeping track of all of that in Google Docs. Or it may have actually been in Excel. In any case, in a spreadsheet. And um, so this right here, because... I, until recently, have been really bad about deleting files that I didn't need anymore or just sort of overwriting them. And sometimes I still do that and it's not good. But this currently is the culmination of roughly about 10 years of NaNoWriMo's. I don't think I've done 10 NaNoWriMo's, but close. Like maybe six or seven or more. I don't know. But every year I tweak this spreadsheet a little bit. And so this is what we have for 2013 um, was, I guess, the last time I updated it. I don't know if that's right, because like I've done it since, but I, I guess this is the version that I have. Anyway, so this first tab is the graphs. This is the fun part, right, where you have a graph. Looks like this particular year I started off on a slump. I caught up on this date here. Then got behind again, caught up, caught up, got behind, caught up, caught up, behind, behind. And then I, you know, I've won. Every time I've tried, I've won. Um, this here shows you how many words I wrote each day. Um, just absolutely. And so the red line is my average words that I've written so far. So that equalizes towards the end. The yellow line is average to go. Like how many I have to write today and every single day fo going forward in order to finish on time. And so that um, gets more erratic as you get on because you're dividing by a few smaller number, right? And then the green line here is just the 1667 every day. And then this here is the uh, daily difference track. So that shows you um, on that mean of 1667 every day. Um, when I'm behind, it goes below. And so the blue line shows you, um, if it, the blue line is above this line, it means that I wrote more than I believe, no, you know what? Zero here represents the yellow line on this graph. So if the blue line is above, that means that I wrote more than I needed to for that day. See how it goes up here, it goes up right here. It goes up here, that's like this one here. And then these high points are these high points here. The red line is where I am with regard to where I need to be um, by the end. So if the blue line goes up, the red line will also go up, but slower, right? And it when the red line is above this line, it means that I'm ahead of schedule for the whole project, not just for that day. So if that makes sense, um, it definitely makes sense when you're in the thick of it, or at least it made sense to me when I was in the thick of it. So, so this is where the magic happens. The second tab is the data tab. We've got the date, the day of the week with a couple notes, like when I went to write-ins, when was my birthday, you know, I had a baby shower, Thanksgiving, stuff like that. Um, so where I should be ideally, where I want to be based on that yellow line before, how many words I've written today, how many words I've written total so far, the average words per day so far, how many to go uh, words are left to go, how many average to go like this is basically this goal is based off of this number and that's where the yellow line is based off of right um then the difference and daily difference from the bottom graph and then this here is the projected finish date so if i do a particularly well one day like here i wrote over 2000 words um that jumped you know 
back I got on track there is finished uh, within November see here I wrote 3,000 words and then suddenly you know I'm back on track again so I ended up finishing on the oh I ended up finishing on the 30th this is one of those days where I only had well no looks like this no sorry here I am uh total here we go this is where I was the day before we finished and there I finished with 25 words to spare and then this last tab I used for word sprints but basically I divide how many more minutes I have left and I do it in so many minute sprints you know if I wanted to write for 10 minutes sprints then I would have to do five of them and, and so this is like the based on how much uh, I've written in the past I believe and so I was using that as a calculator to try to figure out how I'm not I'm not making sense here because it's been a while since I've used this, but what it does show you is that these things get very complicated. This is basically the very first time that I used a spreadsheet for my tracking and all of the various equations and stuff that goes into it. It gets intense. Um, and so variations of this will be recurring as we go through. Um, this next one is a very simple version of the same idea, right? So I wanted to f uh, figure out this particular project was I was knitting a hat for my sister for Christmas. I had been putting it off. I didn't get started until the 18th. This spreadsheet motivates me, so I made a spreadsheet. So um, I wanted this projected finish date to be before, you know, on or before December 25th. And so uh, I needed to do 62 rows, you see here. So this is how many I had done, how many I still needed to do, how many my goal was, you know. So if I get to uh, if I had gotten to nine rows that day, my projected date would have gone below, you know, back before Christmas, but it didn't. So I was behind behind and then I got caught up. And so this is the same, you know, goal, like where I need to get that day, my average so far, and then we're good, right? So that's a very simple version. This is a more complicated idea for the same thing. Um, this was March of 2016. Uh, I decided my monthly resolution was to complete four different projects that I had already started on, uh, crafting stuff. These are stuffing invitations for our wedding. Not very crafty, but I put it on here too. So I needed to stuff, I guess, 86 of them. Um, and then I needed to sew the apron we were using for the money dance, so, uh, embroider the handkerchiefs I gave to my bridesmaids as gifts, and then finish beading the um, second layer of the veil. So I had finished half of it and I needed to do the other half. So this total here, it was in inches. This was in number of handkerchiefs. This was just in percentage, um, which I believe is just sort of estimated. I probably had it written down somewhere what each percentage meant. And then this was just absolute number of invitations. And then this uh, graph here just sort of assumes that each of these projects are the same size. And so when we get to all of them being done, each one is 25 out of 100. And the whole thing is full, but I could um, basically graph here. Like I finished the invitations first, then the apron. And then I started working on the, um, oh, sorry, invitations. Then I worked on the handkerchiefs a bit. Then I finished the apron. Then I finished the handkerchiefs and then I finished the veil. So this definitely kept me motivated. Um, the, yeah, here we go. The finish date is what I wanted to be before the end of March. So you see it kind of fluctuating. Oh yeah. And then this graph is all of the same idea, but this was for my maternity leave month before the baby came. So this is that knitting project that I was showing you with the yellow boxes on paper. Um, I, I believe I've shown this blanket in a few different videos. Basically, it's from corner to corner. And so the first row is two uh, stitches long. The second one was three, four, five, six. And then the middle row was 204 stitches long. So I couldn't just say, let's do two rows per day or whatever, because that would take literally a minute and this would take like an hour. So, um, I basically based my progress off of how many stitches there were, but I w didn't have enough boxes to fill in 41,000 boxes. So, um, that's, there's 41,000 stitches. So there you go. 
Um, and I just sort of used a percentage for to track how far I was doing. So that's uh, why I did 2%, 2 per yellow box on that sheet. Um, the reason why there's some gaps here and some lines in my data is that at this point, I was basing it off of it being smaller, um, like a fewer number of rows, and then I realized it wasn't big enough, so I recalculated it to be more um, long, you know, a bigger project. And so my, you know, this, this dotted line is the goal I need to get to every day, and the purple line is what I actually did. So I needed to do, you know, X number of rows or stitches, and I did more than that, that's great, less than that, that's great. So it jumped up when I thought the project was going to be a lot bigger. And then I ran out of yarn at one point, figured out how, like, that was the point at which I turned around. Um, and so then it jumped back down again because it ended up being bigger than this, but smaller than this. And that's what we've got. So that was the knitting project. I finished that, I think, first. There are other goals. Uh, there was a sewing project goal. This is a different situation in that I um, ended up just buying some of the stuff that I was originally going to sew. So you know, like bought wet bags on Amazon, gave up on more than 40 wipes. And so basically these were all the things I wanted to sew. Um, I assigned each of them in the math here is like one is worth more or less in different things. And you see that the conditional coloring is like light for like a light blue when I've just started and dark, dark blue when I'm done. So I wanted to do like 20 washcloths and 48 wipes, but I only had enough fabric for 40 wipes and no washcloths, which were going to be exactly the same. I was just going to keep them in a different place. The 40 that we have is plenty. It's fine. Um, and I decided that that was going to be fine. So at that point I jumped up. I just threw on the extra eight here and the 20 here. And it's like, okay, making decisions counts as getting stuff done. Um, this column of like the green and red shows you how far uh, ahead or behind I am in different places. This double line is where I just skipped some days where I didn't do anything so that it was to save space. And so I kind of took um, notes about what I did every single day so that I could kind of keep, keep track of what I was doing because you'll see here it says 5.8 breast pads. Basically what that meant is that point one was to trace it, point three is to cut it, point three is to um, sew the darts, and point three is to assemble, because it's all the different steps. And so I would like trace out a bunch of them one night, or like with the wipes, I cut them all in one night. Um, and so that was like a percentage of the total project, but you know, if I had only been tracking how many I had completed, then I, uh, would have had to put a zero, but instead I put a percentage or like a, a fraction. So that's what I did to sort of keep track of all of that. And it's honestly, this is a bit more complicated and more complicated than it needed to be. But just because there was different kinds of things, I just did it this way. Um, I had a very similar system set up for the YouTube videos. And then I ended up adding more videos to it anyway. I got really behind on it and it was not making me happy. And so I did this. This is the same sheet as I showed before with my YouTube planning that had all of those X's. Um, so these are all of the um, baby and planner videos that have seven steps. And then these are all of the Sims videos that had five steps. All of these, you'll see the value of them is one. Uh, it's called conditional formatting, where basically I have it set up so that if the value is one, then it colors the box and the text the same color, so it just fills it in. And so I would go ahead and I'd film a bunch and I'd mark it there. And so over here you have date and then how many component thingies are, you know, how many of these boxes are filled in. Uh, how many I did that particular day, what percentage I am completed, and then this here was the goal so I wanted like 10 steps done, or I wanted seven steps done that day and I did 10, yeah, I'm ahead of schedule. So it turns, you know, more green when I'm farther ahead of schedule. And then this is the projected finish date. It got a little complicated. These lines here were, um, there were certain videos that I couldn't film until something else was done or until a certain date. I wanted to film a video like when I actually took off maternity leave, which was, um, I think I might have filmed that here. I might have filmed that like on the weekend, but 
Um, so like here, zero, zero, because there was nothing I could do. I think I ended up like prepping a video in advance here. And so I changed what like the goal, th these numbers here were based off different totals until I got to where I could finish them all 100%. And that is what that looked like. So uh, that's the last one. Basically, I find, uh, I find Excel sheets to be really motivating. And <laughs> I don't know if any of this made any sense. If you're familiar with Excel, maybe you're able to follow along. Otherwise, maybe you got some ideas or maybe you just have an insight into the way my brain works. Um, I just, I really liked having these. The thing I like about spreadsheets and digital spreadsheets instead of using uh, paper tracking for these kinds of things is that I can sort of look ahead and experiment and go, okay, if I do, you know, this many this day and this many this day, then how much will I have to do over the weekend? Or, you know, oh, if I do a really good weekend, then, you know, can I take a couple weeks, a couple days off of my project? And so I can sort of project different ideas and, um, you know, play around with the numbers and figure out, you know, what things are going to look like in a way that I wouldn't be able to project. I wouldn't be able to get that um, projected finish date here with a paper planner. That would just take a lot of month, a lot of, you know, math and just not be worth it. And I would have to keep erasing things as I update them. It's much more fulfilling for me to actually, you know, put a one in each of these boxes as I do the row than to wait till the end of the day. I have to count up and go, all right, that's what I did do. I'd rather have what I am doing now because it's more up to the minute and it's more um, motivating to me. So that's just where I am. Thank you to Nana for the suggestion for the video that brought us here and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you were going to forget to subscribe, you shouldn't do that. And I will see you in the next one uh, on Sunday. See you then. Bye.